wagering agreement means a betting agreement wager means to bet to wager means to bet to wager means to bet so wagering means betting wagering means betting so it is an agreement wherein you bet now what do you mean by a bet betting means wherein you decide to give or to earn cash depending on some uncertain event let's say i and my friend enter into a contract i tell him if it rains tomorrow i'll give you 100 rupees but if it doesn't you'll have to give me 100 rupees so this kind of a arrangement between two people wherein cash would be exchanged depending upon a future uncertain event depending upon an event the result of which is not known to either party so if it rains tomorrow i'll have to give him 100 rupees if it doesn't rain he'll have to pay it to me i'll receive 100 rupees from him so either i'll pay or i'll receive so either way cash is going to be exchanged either i'll pay him or he'll pay me so depending on the result the cash is exchanged such a contract where cash is exchanged depending on the result of an uncertain event it is called as wagering so what is wagering wagering means an agreement where cash is exchanged depending on result of an uncertain future event now this result is not known to any of the parties if it would rain or it won't rain no party knows because it is in the hands of the nature so this contract would be called as a betting contract i'll give you one more example i have an agreement with my friend that if a particular ship sorry if a particular ship arrives to the port of bombay from london the ship has started from london so i tell him if the ship arrives to the port of bombay i'll give you 10000 rupees but if it doesn't arrive here if it gets stuck or if it uh, drowns midway or if it is hurt by a hurricane or you know some other natural disaster and it cannot come through you will have to give me 10000 rupees so this is a transaction where we are betting on the result of a ship if the ship will arrive here or no so this is a future uncertain event and on the result of which the cash would be exchanged such an uh, such an agreement would form to be a wagering agreement now there are some points which are very much important from the point of view of a wagering agreement in terms of law let's understand those points first point is wagering agreement is illegal in india it is not allowed it is against the law to bet you cannot have contracts wherein you are betting i know we normally tend to bet we tend to bet in small things we uh, go for bets of 100 rupees or 500 rupees but actually if you 
ask me actually as per law betting is illegal it is not allowed in india it is illegal and since it is illegal it the contract or the agreement becomes void any contract of betting would be illegal and since it is illegal it will become void example given here is let's say tomorrow there is a match there is a there is a ipl match between uh, jaipur and uh, kolkata and i engage you in a bet with me i tell you if jaipur wins you give me 100 rupees but if kolkata wins i'll give you 100 rupees now this is precisely what a betting contract or what a betting uh, betting agreement will be if jaipur wins i win i get 100 rupees if kolkata wins i pay you 100 rupees you get 100 rupees you win so now this is a contract which is based on some future uncertain event the result will decide to which side the cash will flow You know, many people bet not only on the end result of a match, they even bet on how much runs would be scored in an over or even how many runs would be scored on the next ball. Even the next ball is a future uncertain event because it is not in their hands, it is in the hands of the batsman. So It is a future uncertain event, the result will decide which side the cash will flow, it's a betting agreement. And if we enter in such agreements, such agreements are illegal and thus void. Next is, if one party has control, I'll just raise it. Okay. Yeah. If one party has control over the event, it is not a wager. If one party has control over the event, it will not be considered as a wager. Now, if I tell you that if I come to play cricket tomorrow, you give me 100 rupees. And if I don't come to play cricket tomorrow, I will give you 100 rupees. Now, do you think this kind of an agreement would be considered as a wagering agreement? Is this a wagering agreement? No, it is not a wagering agreement because the end result here is in my control, is in my hands. If I want, I will come tomorrow and play cricket. If I don't want, I will not come tomorrow. So now here since it is in my control I will always come tomorrow and win 100 rupees from you. So the result of the event is in my control now. Such an event will never, such an agreement rather will never qualify as a wagering agreement. Because for wagering agreement the result should not be in anybody's control, in either party's control. It should be unknown to both of them. It should be out of the control of both of them. Okay. Next point is wagering and collateral transactions. What do you mean by collateral transaction? Collateral transaction means a transaction which is related, which is linked to the original or the primary or the main transaction. I'll give you an example here. There's a person A. He wants to have a bet with P. 
However, he does not have money, so he goes to see and ask money from him. So A tells B that I'll pay you hundred rupees if India wins. There's a match. Let's say there's a match between India and Australia. I'll pay you hundred rupees if India wins. If Australia wins, you give me hundred rupees. India wins. A pays to B. If Australia wins, B pays to A. However, for this, it was the condition was decided that both of them would have to bring out their hundred rupees. Out. I mean, both of them will bring their hundred rupees out, so that after the result, no party cheats. The cash gets exchanged. It is in the earnest interest of the both. Now, A does not have money, so what does he do? He goes to C. He tells C, "If you give me hundred rupees in the bet." I'll repay it as hundred and fifty if I win, and I'll repay hundred if I lose. The whole hundred gets repaid to you if I lose. So C says, "Okay." In either case, I don't lose money. If A wins, I get one fifty. If A loses, I at least get hundred rupees. So he's okay. He lends him hundred rupees. A goes to B and gives him, keeps out his hundred rupees. So after the match, let's say Australia wins. So now A gets two hundred rupees because hundred he had contributed, and hundred of B he wins. So now he has two hundred rupees. Out of these, he has to pay one fifty. He pays it to C. He gets a profit of fifty. He gets to keep fifty rupees, so he's happy. Now let's assume that India won. Now what happens in this case? He has to pay to B, but he has already kept it in the pool. So B gets the hundred rupees that A had kept it, kept in the pool. So B has two hundred rupees now. Now A needs to pay hundred rupees to C. He has lost, so he is required to pay at least hundred rupees to C. And A says, "I'll not pay you as I do not have any money with me." So C says, "I'll." Do a case against you. I'll go to the court. So A says to him, "Even if you go to the court, the betting transaction is illegal. It is void. The court will not support you." Whose contention do you think is correct here? Will C win or will A win? Let's see. Now, if you analyze. There are two contracts which are taking place here. First contract is between A and B to exchange money, and the second contract is between A and C. It is like a loan contract wherein C is financing A. So this is the main contract, whereas this is the collateral contract, which is the link contract. Now you can see the main contract is between A and B, because of which A went to C and did a collateral or a linked contract. Linked contract means it is a secondary contract, not a main contract. So here the main contract is 
void what do you think is the illegal contract also void no the illegal contract here is valid now if you remember we have learned this earlier that if the main contract is illegal the collateral contract is also illegal however wagering is an exception to that rule we said if the main contract is void and not illegal the collateral contract remains valid however if the main contract is illegal the collateral contract also becomes illegal here the main contract is void and illegal so ideally the collateral contract should also have become illegal but the collateral contract here is valid because wagering is an exception to that rule that when the main contract is illegal and void the collateral contract also becomes illegal and void wagering is an exception to that rule here collateral contract remains valid